Welcome to Next Lab's expert Q&A series. This series was designed to inform you of relevant cybersecurity topics via expert knowledge. In this episode, our guest Bill Fisher will cover data security and ransomware defense. Bill Fisher is a security engineer for NIST, National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. Now, Bill will introduce himself before we move into the Q&A. Hey, this is uh, Bill Fisher. I am a security engineer at the NIST National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. I've been there for about uh, eight and a half years now, and I've spent a good part of my time um, tackling a few different areas within cybersecurity. A lot of work on the identity and access management side of the house, and then more recently, I have been working with the NIST ransomware team to help address some of the ransomware challenges that face our nation. Now, let's move into the Q&A. What are ransomware attackers trying to accomplish? Ransomware attackers are really trying to accomplish one goal, which is to get you to uh, pay the ransom. Uh, They're not necessarily interested in sensitive data or, or getting intellectual property or um, figuring out how they're going to sell things on, um, you know, aftermarkets, uh, on the dark web, anything like that. Uh, they're really monetarily motivated, and um, they just want to figure out how they can get you to pay a ransom. Um, because from a sort of cost-benefit analysis, that's the uh, that's the low-hanging fruit. How is ransomware different from other malware? In past, you might think of a data breach as something where uh, you discover it, you then have time to investigate it, figure out, hey, what does this uh, sort of suspicious traffic look like? Or maybe I had some sort of hit on a signature or indicator of compromise. These, are, these things are typically data confidentiality type attacks. But ransomware attacks aren't really like that. They're more of any data availability attack, which means that they're holding your data ransom where you don't have access to it in order to put pressure on the organization. Ransomware has been around for a while now. What has put it back in the spotlight? That uh, attackers are really just getting more organized. You know, we're even seeing things like ransomware groups hiring negotiators to help negotiate the ransoms to get better payouts. We're seeing them do things like hire um, uh, industry subject matter experts who know a given organization's business and how they operate and helping them come up with a very um, reasonable ransom. And what what I mean by that? Well, a ransom that's, you know, um, high enough that you'll still pay it, but not so high that it doesn't seem to make sense for you from a cost benefit analysis. So they're trying to get really good at coming up with numbers for uh, what they request in the ransom. We're seeing things like ransomware as a service. Um, You know, these attackers are selling um, parts of an attack. So if you already have access to an organization. You can go out and buy the ransomware malware and leverage that. Um, we're also seeing impacts from uh, targeting managed service providers. So, for instance, the Kaseya attack that happened last year, that was a managed service provider, and it was estimated that that um, affected some 1,500 organizations. So, again, it's a bang for your buck type of scenario for the attacker. How do I um, take the least amount of effort and risk and have the biggest amount of impact and chance of getting paid? Uh, for the efforts. This concludes part one of the first episode of the expert Q&A series, Data Security and Ransomware Defense. In part two, Bill Fisher will cover mitigating ransomware risk and what resources NIST offers to help manage this risk. Stay tuned to learn more.